Macario has always had a, a passion for people, a passion for his community, the Latino community. He always made you feel like you were family. He didn't want people to be treated unfairly because they were Latino. And he fought very hard through his, some of his protests for human rights, better working conditions, better environmental conditions in some of the neighborhoods that people live. Macario's legacy is profound. He has really inspired not just one generation of leaders and artists, many. Probably Casa de Midas is best known for its Dia de los Muertos altars and exhibits. If you're looking for art and culture, all roads lead to Casa de Midas. Macario was inspired to open Casa de Midas, I think primarily by his father, Jesus Ramirez and the cultural traditions and impact that his father would teach him about, as well as his dad taking him to see his grandmother, his abuelita in um, Monterrey, and showing him altars for Dia de los Muertos, which Macario likes to say scared the hell out of me in the beginning. But as he, his father taught him more about it and taught him more of the wonderful opportunity it was to honor your family and honor your culture. Macario was born in San Antonio. His parents had immigrated from Mexico. He was one of six children born there. He had five siblings. And his parents always emphasized education, as his dad did. They were migrant farm workers, and I remember him having stories of them piling into a Jeep and heading up north. They went up to Wisconsin, Minnesota in the summers, but his father always uh, made sure they returned in time for them to go back to school, that education was always what was gonna get them ahead. So his dad worked very hard, and the, at, toward the end of his life, his father had a shop at El Mercado in San Antonio, and that was really a great influence on Macario as well. We met through a, a presentation he was giving at the uh, singles group at a church, this would have been in the late 70s, I believe. Macario has always had a lot of charm. We got married July 3rd, 1983, so we've had a, a lot of good years together. Well, one of Macario's issues, I think, and he did teach me a lot about the importance of equity, equity in education, equity in media coverage, employment opportunities. I think part of it as well were some of the conditions that he grew up with. Protesting all over the place, uh, media outlets or uh, businesses that weren't doing right by the Latino culture or politicians and and uh, that's how I really got involved with him. Well in the mid 80s when Macario founded Casa de Amitas, and that was an opportunity that Macario took to uh, bring in the folk art from Mexico, a time to do some of his own crafts that his dad had probably taught him and it's an opportunity to teach people about the culture. Probably Casa de Amitas is best known for its Dia de los Muertos uh, altars and exhibits. Well, Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, I grew up in Houston, and I never even heard of it until my late 20s when I met him, and he explained it to me, and, and he started showing me altars, and I really think he brought that tradition to Houston with him. An ofrenda is an offering. We also use the word altar to the person that you're honoring or to the people that you're honoring. Very much a part of the tradition for Day of the Dead. It's a time that it's believed that the souls of the dead are allowed to return to earth to celebrate a few hours with the, their living families. Before creating the altar for my grandfather, I truly wasn't at peace with his death. Um, celebrating my grandfather's whole life um, that year and creating the altar for him actually really brought me true inner peace and um, it's just a beautiful experience and I have Mr. Ramirez to thank for that. When my mom passed away, Macario was very wise, uh, we talked a lot and he gave me a wonderful opportunity to build an ofrenda or an altar to my mom which really helped me get through that time. That's one of the reasons for the skulls. They're not meant to represent scary figures coming out of the tomb, but they're smiling, doing everyday things, riding bicycles, getting married, and they're meant to represent those who have passed. It's also a way to 
poke fun at death. Uh, death is a great equalizer and no one escapes it. And this was a way that I think in Mexico that they mock uh, the fear of death. We encourage them to bring a picture of someone that they have lost. And then we have a procession, a half block procession. The procession for me was very traditional to Mexico. We'd, we'd seen them in Oaxaca, we'd seen them in Mexico City and De Efe, and it was just, it, it just fills your heart. He's always been very proud. He's made me very proud of the celebrations that we've had here. Not only did he have this store, Casa Ramirez, but in the back there's a big room that he used for all kinds of community events, whether it was uh, teaching poetry or writing or teaching about uh, Dia los Muertos, how to build an altar, uh, having little uh, spoken word type uh, readings, um, even a phone bank for, for causes that he was interested in helping. My husband, Macario, died June 10th, 2020. There was a rapidly failing heart condition and not the coronavirus. Uh, you know, a lot of people have come in and shared memories of Macario. Um, his kindness, his reaching out to them, the things they learned from them how much he enjoyed visiting with them. And I feel that that legacy will live on in that manner, as well as all the things that he's taught people. Once I came, I knew I was at home. I found a mentor. I benefited so much from his wisdom, his teachings, and his knowledge that he's inspired me and many generations of our artists to give back. You know, I know there's so many of us that loved him and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I will miss his wisdom, and I think our job is to spread that.